hello friends nice meeting you all welcome back to my video session and hope you are all doing good and taking necessary care and protection against covid yeah and uh, this video is all about power curve measurements and when we started this series we first started with uh, wind turbine aerodynamics and then moved on to uh, aero elastic simulation and then uh, in the last uh, last video we discussed about the different type of measurements being carried out on wind turbines and then this video is exclusive about or or a kind of deep dive into the power curve measurements come on let's get into the video uh, into the chapter and uh, so power curve measurements and this uh, discussion is skeleton in this way uh, we will be discussing about the need of the power curve measurement standards instrumentation terrain and sector assessments the measurement process data rejection data database fulfillment criteria the method of binning the uncertainties and then the finally the ap calculation yeah so this is typically how a power curve will look like and then okay this is all the calculation parts we will we will come to this later and then we will first start with the need so what is the need for a power curve measurement so we all know uh, a wind turbine is characterized by its power curve so one needs to know what is the uh, uh, wind wind speed and then what is the power output for this particular turbine so that's the ultimate measure of or a qualification criteria of any wind turbine in this world so therefore power curve measurement plays a very vital role in characterization of a wind turbine so the need is basically two need one is uh, to know how uh, the performance of the turbine which is normally done at the at the stage of prototyping when the first prototype is made and then taken to the field when they do the complete process of type testing the the, the mandatory measurement and the very vital measurement is the power curve measurement and uh, so this is the know how uh, process which takes place at the uh, prototyping stage and then the second one is for the purpose of warranty claims so wherein when a, when a, when a oem when a wind turbine manufacturer sells this turbine to a wind farm developer or owner of a wind farm then within uh, let's say one year from the date of commissioning the oem is committed to prove the performance of this particular wind turbine in the field so that's where they do a uh, uh, field power curve measurements and then compare the measured power curve against the warranty or the committed power curve by the oem so that's the process the second need which is warranty test and then uh, what is the standard which governs the whole process which is iec 6140-12-1 this standard talks about all the stages all the activities involved in the power curve measurement starting from selection of instruments to uh, the um, sampling frequency of the measurements uh, to the accuracies of the instruments to the uh, measurement process to the data analysis process to uh, to the, the to the next stages of uncertainty calculation to the next stage of aep calculation and all this it is well defined and explained by the standard and uh, okay then what is the instrumentation setup needed to carry out the power curve measurement so i think in the last video we also discussed a schematic of a typical measurement setup needed for doing a type testing it is the same setup which is also needed to do a power curve measurement wherein you need to have a metrological mast exactly in front of the test turbine let's say at a distance of 2.8 time 2 2 times the diameter to 4 times the diameter which is again this this governing this uh, distance is governed by 12-1 standard which says the ideal distance between the test turbine and the mast is between 2d to 4d so therefore a metrological mast is erected in front of the turbine uh, test turbine and then you need to necessarily have a test turbine so uh, from the mast you measure the metrological quantity starting from wind speed wind direction humidity temperature pressure and rain so you you have to mount all the class 1 sensors for all these metrological quantity measurement and then from the turbine side you need to measure active power reactive power frequency and then the operational status of the turbine so which is called as the turbine parameters so all this met parameters and turbine parameters are pulled into a data acquisition system so this one you can keep it either in the met mast or in the turbine uh, control control room so the the point is that all the parameters the met parameters and turbine parameters should be collated and collected in one data logger so that everything comes in one time stamp in one database so that's the instrumentation needed and uh, like i said uh, iec 12-1 clearly explains what kind of instruments to be used what accuracy classes and then uh, what kind of calibration to be done everything is clearly ex explained by 12-1 and the latest version of 12-1 is edition 2 and that's the industry standard today and then uh, the next chapter that is that is uh, that that is uh, that comes in the process of power curve measurement is 
terrain assessment so which is selection of the test turbine so that the selection of a test turbine in a wind farm let's say there is 10 to 15 turbines and you need to select one turbine which is a representative of the whole wind farm on which you will be conducting the power curve measurement so how is that done that's done by this process of terrain assessment and then the sector assessment or the obstacle assessment so you need to assess the site for two two purpose one is for the you need to ensure that the, the in front of the test machine you have a very flat terrain a gentle slope and then iec also says about a slope criteria let's say from assume this is the turbine position and then you have meteorological mast here so and the distance between the mast uh, turbine and the mast is as i told it could be anywhere between two times the diameter to four times the diameter let's say the ideal is 2.5 d that's what we call it so therefore from this distance here it is 2.5 d and this 2.5 d is called as 1 l so that's the length that's the distance between the test turbine and the mid mast so therefore what IEC says you need to find the slope between this 0 point to 2 l so in 2 l you need to have a radius imaginary circle and then from 0 to 2 l there is a slope criteria let's say it's 3 percent i don't remember the number now but there is a slope criteria let's say if it is 3 percentage then the site in which you are going to do this turbine uh, power curve measurement you need to ensure the 0 to 2 l slope is within the limit of 3 percentage and then from 2 l to 4 l there is again a criteria so the slope changes and then from 4L to 8L and then from 8L to 16L. So 16L is the outermost circle within which you need to ensure there is no obstacles or even if there is an obstacle it is not on the predominant wind direction and then the slopes are matching to all the requirements from the IEC 12-1. So you need to ensure a good terrain which is then gently flat and then uh, so which is like uh, you need to have a condition where the test site is more similar to a wind tunnel where the wind flow is very laminar in nature in reality it is not possible but the standard says you you if you follow all the guidelines in the standard try to match the requirements of the slope in the standard then ideally you will get such a site so that's what is all about terrain assessment and then the sector assessment is identification of a turbine where it has a very clear uh, a, a, a wide band of useful measurement data coming in not having any test turbine in front of the uh, mast or the um, operating turbine in front of the test turbine so wherein uh, it gets big and then the the, the, the the wind which comes crossing this turbine is not going to be useful for testing this particular turbine so therefore you need to ensure in the 16L uh, circle in the radius there is no operating turbine there is no obstacles there is no big chimneys or there is no uh, quarries stone quarries or there is no hillock so you need to ensure that that such a useful measurement sector is available for your measurement you can also have a narrow band but still the, the problem here is then the measurement process will be extending because you only can use this useful measurement sector data that is coming in for your power curve measurement otherwise you can also always wind comes from any direction 360 degrees you will have wind coming but the wind coming from other directions will naturally be affected by various other operating turbines so always you need to have a clear measurement sector so that's how the test turbine is selected with this process and as i told 12-1 clearly explains the uh, process clearly explains gives the requirement for the slopes and then uh, the formula to calculate the measurement sector is all explained here in the sector assessment chapter and then um, next is about the measurement so measurement is all about with the help of this instrumentation setup you need to measure all the data so you need to basically measure wind speed and the power and then also other parameters supporting parameters like humidity temperature pressure and then operational status all these are also needed to do a proper data rejection and then data filtering because uh, there may be instances where your turbine is stopped uh, even though the wind is high but there may be instances where your, your power is not being produced because the turbine may be stopped for uh, various reasons like uh, uh, breakdown maintenance or maybe they do a routine maintenance there could be 100 reasons why a turbine was not operating when the wind was high so therefore such data has to be eliminated which is all dealt in the data rejection chapter and then also data collected during the pro where, when, when there is a rain in the site so that also influences the wind and then also the behavior of the turbine so therefore such data data collected during rain or precipitation is also filtered 
So the IEC talks about a standard uh, filter criteria, but there could also be some custom specific uh, filter condition between uh, the OEM and the IPP for a specific project. So that could be uh, agreed between the two parties, but ideally IEC 12-1 says these are the mandatory filter conditions. So all that are dealt in this chapter of 12-1, which is data rejection and then a database criteria. So, so this is nothing but how do you say a power core measurement is completed and that's why this process, this criteria. So normally when you measure the power curve, so, as, um, so the sampling frequency of this measurement is 1 hertz, that's what is 12-1 demanding. So you need to collect one sample per second per parameter uh, in this uh, power curve measurements. So uh, therefore every 10 minutes you will be having 600 points and then there will be one average for this 600 points. So which is this point? A point here represents a 10 minute average, an average for 600 seconds. Okay. So you have, let's say this is one point. So let's say this is one point where you have for this wind speed, this is the power. So this, this point here represents an average of a 10 minute. Yeah. So like that you have so many points here, which is called the scatter plot. And this scatter normally, uh, when you when you plot the scatter, you can see a max maximum uh, point and then a minimum scatter. Sorry, this is the mean scatter, and then there will always be a, a minimum, and then there is also a standard deviation. So because it is for 10 minutes, you you take the statistics and then plot it as a scatter plot. Here, for convenience, I've just plotted the the mean of the 10 minutes, not the other other parameters of max, minimum, and standard deviation. So and then, so this is the scatter, and uh, so uh, so from cut-in, so you need to collect data from cut-in, which is uh, let's say 2.5 meters per second to 1.5 times VREF. So what is VREF? VREF is nothing but um, the the wind speed at which the turbine produces 85 percentage of the rated power. Let's say if this is a thousand kilowatt machine, a one megawatt turbine, then you you have to calculate or or see the power curve at what wind speed 850 kilowatt is achieved so that wind speed is taken as uh, the uh, vref reference wind speed let's say if 10 meters per second is the wind speed at which your turbine reaches 85 percentage of the rated then 1.5 times vref will be 15 meters per second so therefore you need to collect data up to 15 meters per second and uh, also uh, the wind speed wind speed uh, uh, axis is divided into 0.5 wind width so every 0.5 that that is from 2 to 2.5, 2.5 to 3, 3 to 3.5, 3.5 to 4. So like that the wind speed axis is divided into 0.5 bin and for each bin width you need to have 3 data points. So that's what the standard talks about the completion or the measurement uh, uh, database criteria fulfillment. So you need to ensure the bins are divided into 0.5 meters per second and you ensure that every bin has 3 data points which is 10 minute data point so which means half an hour data has to be provided in every wind speed bin so and then you need to have the highest wind speed recorded as 1.5 times vref and overall a minimum of 180 hours of measurement has to be carried out so that's what is the database criteria and then once you have once we fulfill all the criteria then you do a method of binning method of binning is, is similar to averaging process where uh, for every bin uh, I, I told you should have minimum three data points in each bin, but you can have any any number more than three three data points. So you need to have an average point. You calculate an average point for every bin, and then all these average points are joined, and then finally you get the bin the power curve. So this process is explained in this section method of binning of the standard. And then uh, once you have the measured the bin the power curve, then there is a chapter which deals with the uncertainty calculation and which comes in the annex E of 12-1 standard. So uncertainty is basically the uh, uh, in, uh, in a uh, cool language or layman language, I can say it's an error uh, associated with any measurement that you do. So uh, like here the measurement is the power curve. So it's not one parameter that you're measuring. The, it's, it's a dual parameter, the power curve, the, the wind speed versus power graph is the measurement here. And this also is naturally associated with a lot of uncertainties that, that comes in from the measurement process that comes from various instruments that you use. So therefore, there is a type A uncertainty calculation and type B uncertainty calculation. And then finally, you have a combined uncertainty, which is again represented for every bin. So for every bin, 
you have a wind speed value and corresponding power value measured power value and then you have a uncertainty associated which will be like plus or minus so many x kilowatt that will be the uncertainty associated with every bin so that is also calculated and then finally you calculate the annual energy production so uh, which is explained here so assume this is the measured power curve so one way of comparing the power curve measured power curve with the warranty is just directly over plotting the measured power curve with the warranty power curve so you can always see the difference between the measured and the warranty so this is one way how you see the uh, difference in performance so this is the ideally the the level in which your turbine has to operate but in practical you are operating in this range and therefore it definitely clearly explains there is a deficiency in your turbine so and this is one way the other way is to compare the annual energy production like use this measured power curve and then assume the standard uh, frequency distribution with 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 the standard ank parameters normally a rally distribution is considered and uh, you you uh, plot this uh, frequency distribution for wind speed where you have wind speed versus hours and then on the other hand you have uh, measured power curve wind speed on the kilowatt then you take a product sum then finally kilowatt into hours you get kilowatt hour which is the annual energy production for the whole year and because this is a distribution for the whole year and uh, so uh, so uh, when you do uh, aep measured uh, calculation you need to extrapolate this power curve to the cutout uh, a wind condition let's say uh, for this particular turbine 20 meters per second is the cutout uh, but but still if from the measurement you only have measured up to 15 meters per second so therefore what you can what you are allowed to do is you have to simply extrapolate this up to 20 meters per second and then the power curve drops to zero so and then you have to consider that extrapolated measured power curve and then use the distribution and then finally calculate multiply and then sum of all the bins then finally you get the aep measured which is the kilowatt hour and similarly you substitute this measured power curve with the warranty power curve then you will arrive at the aep warranty and then finally you take a ratio between the measured aep and the warranty aep then finally you get the pass percentage or the percentage of the performance and ideally in the industry today we have 95 percentage as the benchmark like most turbine oems are expected to perform more than 95 percentage by the owners of the wind farm so that's the whole process of power curve measurement i hope you enjoyed this session and got a clear picture at least a fair decent picture of how power curve measurement is carried out in a field and what is the significance of it and what kind of instruments are used and what is the governing standard and then the order what is the process that is dealt in the uh, whole power curve measurement process and then uh, how the annual energy production is compared with the warranty aep i think you got a clear picture so thanks for watching all my videos and then uh, i would request if you really like this please kindly pass on to uh, various uh, uh, people who will be benefited by this video it will be happy for me because uh, um it reaches out to a large community and then if they get benefit of it it's really a good thing so thank you once again thanks for watching and uh, till then uh, it's bye and then we will see you in the next video bye cool